and in this tutorial I'll show you how to make this eye pattern bracelet using cord, beading thread, and glass beads. It also has a button closure. I don't have a pattern to link you to for this tutorial because I didn't use a pattern, but hopefully I make everything clear enough for you to follow along. And if you decide to make this bracelet, be sure to show it to me by tagging me on Instagram or on Facebook. For this project you'll need seed beads. I picked mine in light green, dark green, dark blue, and light blue. You'll need some safety pins, a toggle button, scissors, waxed cord or any type of cord you prefer, some beading thread, and of course a needle that is small enough to pass through your beads. Begin by measuring your cord twice around your wrist, then use that length and double it over and cut your cord to that length. Then use that pre-measured piece of cord and cut a second piece of cord that is the exact same measurement as that one. Once you've cut your cords, put the ends of each cord through your toggle button and position your button in the center of both of your cords. The easiest way to do this is to grab all four ends of your cords and hold them together and then pull on the button. Once you've done that, set that aside. Next, you're going to measure your thread. Wrap the thread twice around your wrist and then before cutting that, you'll want to fold it over and duplicate that measurement five or six times. I recommend doubling it over six times because you're probably going to use all of your beading thread. It may seem like a lot, but you're going to be going sideways through your bracelet rather than just going from one end to the other. Then slip that thread through the toggle button with the rest of your cords and tie it into a surgeon's knot or any secure knot. Then grab your thread and all of your cords all together in one bunch and tie those in a knot. You're going to want to push that knot up as close to the toggle button as you can and then pull it really tight. This is going to add a little bit of strength to your bracelet. Then you'll want to pin that down to your work surface. You can use your pant leg, you can use your bedding, the carpet, anything that's soft. If you don't have a safety pin, you can also clip it down in a clipboard instead. Then grab your two center cords and your string and take your left cord and begin knotting around it. Basically grab your left cord, put it underneath your center working cords and then back over your center cords and through the loop. Then switch to the right side, put your right cord underneath your center cords, then pass it back over your center cords and through the loop and pull it tight to the right. Then switch back to the left, Grab your left cord, put it underneath your center cords, put it over the center cords and back through the loop and pull it to the left. Then back to the right, under the center cords, over the center cords and through the loop. Then grab your other safety pins or another clip or tape or anything that you have lying around to tape down your other ends of your cords. You're going to want them secure because when they're pulled taut, it makes it a lot easier to do your beading over them. Now you're ready to start your beading. You'll want to thread your needle and then pass your thread through two light green beads. Position them between your outer cords so your middle cords will have a gap between them with no bead. And this is going to go underneath all of your cords. Then you'll pass your needle through back over and you're going to go over the right cord through the bead, then over your center cords and then through the other bead and over the last cord. So you're going to pass your string underneath all the cords when you go to the right and then over all the cords when you go back towards the left. And be careful that you don't actually sew through any of your cords during this step. Then pull it tight and shimmy all of your beads as far up as possible to keep the work tight. For the next row, do one light green, one light blue, and one light green. Pass them underneath all of your cords. And for this row, each set of cords will have a bead in between it. Pass your needle back over the cords and through all the beads, being careful that you're going over the cords and through the beads and not under any of the cords. And this gets really simple and easy once you've had a little bit of practice at it. But once you're getting started, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And when you're beginning your bracelet, it's always gonna be a little bit harder to work with because it's a tighter space. For the next row, do the same thing. One light green, one light blue, and one light green. For the next row, do one light green, two light blue, and one light green. For the next row, one light green, one light blue, one dark green, one light blue, and one light green. And you're only going to be positioning your single light green beads between those outer cords. So your center should have three beads. 
For the next row, do one light green on the left, one light blue, two dark green, one light blue in the middle, and then one light green on the right. For the next row, on the left, light green in the center, light blue, dark green, light blue, dark green, light blue, and light green on the right. For the next row, on the left, light green in the middle, light blue, dark green, dark green, light blue, and on the right, light green. For the next row, on the left, two light green in the middle, one light blue, one dark green, one light blue, and on the right, two light green. So you'll notice you're going to start switching it up and adding more to the sides. On the left, light green, dark blue, light green in the middle, two light blue. On the right, light green, dark blue, and light green. For the next row, on the left, light green, dark blue, dark blue, light green in the center, one light blue. On the right, light green, dark blue, dark blue, and light green. For the next row, on the left, light green, dark blue, light green, dark blue, light green in the center, one light blue. On the right, light green, dark blue, light green, dark blue, and light green. So you'll see that you're basically just switching from the center having the pattern to the sides having the pattern at this point. And if you're having trouble pulling your needle through, use some pliers. For the next row, on the left, light green, two dark blue, light green, center, light blue, right, light green, two dark blue, and one light green. For the next row, on the left, light green, dark blue, light green, in the center, two light blue, on the right, light green, dark blue, and light green. Next row on the left, two light green. In the center, light blue, dark green, light blue. On the right, two light green. Next row on the left, one light green. In the center, light blue, two dark green, one light blue. And on the right, one light green. Next row on the left, light green. In the middle, light blue, dark green, light blue, dark green, light blue, and light green on the right. For the next row on the left, light green in the middle, light blue, two dark green, one light blue, and on the right, one light green. For the next row, on the left, two light green, in the middle, one light blue, one dark green, one light blue, and on the right, two light green. Next row, light green, dark blue, light green on the left, two light blue in the middle, light green, dark blue, light green on the right. Next row, light green, two dark blue, light green on the left, light blue in the center, light green, two dark blue, light green on the right. Next row, light green, dark blue, light green, dark blue, light green on the left, one light blue in the middle, light green, dark blue, light green, dark blue, light green on the right. Next row, light green, two dark blue, light green on the left, light blue in the middle, light green, two dark blue, light green on the right. Next row, light green, dark blue, light green on the left, two light blue in the middle, light green, dark blue, light green on the right. Next row, two light green on the left, one light blue, light green, light blue in the middle, and two light green on the right. Next row, one light green, center, one light blue, two dark green, one light blue, right, one light green. Next row, left, one light green, center, light blue, dark green, light blue, dark green, light blue, right, one light green. Next row on the left, one light green, center, light blue, two dark green, light blue, right, one light green. Next row on the left, one light green, center, light blue, dark green, light blue, and on the right, one light green. Next row, and we're getting close to finishing up here, left, light green, center, two light blue, right, light green. Next row, left, light green, center, light blue, right, light green. Next row, same thing, light green, light blue, light green. And now for the very last row, simply do two light green and you're going to skip the middle so there's no bead in the center, just on the left and on the right. And once you've done your last beads, take your needle and stitch through your cords. So you're going to be sewing through the center of all of your cords. Pull your needle all the way through and then sew back in the opposite direction, making sure that you don't go through the exact same hole. Pull that tight and then pick one of your center cords and tie another little surgeon's knot or overhand knot or square knot, anything that's going to secure that little thread in there and make it stay put. And then you'll do your stylized braid again over your center cords. So do right, left, right, left and make that as long as you want it on that end of your bracelet. And if you wanted to, you could even keep your beading pattern going for longer and then just double it up 
and then you'll have to do less of this on your bracelet because the beads will go almost all the way around your wrist. Then do an overhand knot around the whole thing to tie it off. I ended up trimming off two of my short cords and then I was left with two. And so I tied those in a knot. And then you'll want to measure how big of a space you need before you tie your next knot so that it's going to fit over your button because this is how you're going to hold it onto your wrist. So I left a gap of about two centimeters and that was enough space to fit my button in. And that is how you finish off your bracelet. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and check out my channel for other fun DIY projects.